Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Well, hello, folks. Welcome to About the House. This is your audio university of knowledge on everything about your home, from construction, remodeling, home improvement, building, and everything related. You can have a forever library through our podcast and our YouTube radio shows on each subject we air. You can also find more information about our company on our shows, uh, on our webpage, GallowayBuildingServices.com, and also our Facebook page, GallowayBuildingServices.com. Hey, this is Troy Galloway, your humble host owner of Galloway Building Services. Like this show, we're one of a kind. There isn't another company that provides the unique services we do for folks throughout the Midwest every day. And we love doing it. We love helping them. We help folks doing construction consulting. So if you have any questions, whether your job's being done right or not, give us a call. Uh, we come in there, take a look at it, and, you know, you always got one of these neighbors out there that know everything except for what they're talking about. Well, if you got one of them and he's saying the job's being done wrong, uh, then give us a call. Or if the contractor says it's being done right and you just know better, give us a call. We come in and help you out with this kind of inspections. We do also do commercial and residential inspections. So say if you're buying or selling a building and you want to make sure you know what you're buying, see if it's got the value that they're asking for or what kind of major conditions may, you know, may be a money pit. You give us a call for that as well. Uh, we also do conflict resolutions and expert witnessing. We've been doing this now for over 42 years our motto is is that we make sure that you're getting what you paid for the job is being done right and you're not getting ripped off so give us a call galloway building services phone number 314-520-6655 all righty folks hey i'm jumping right into this here because this is going to be a great show this is so weather related uh because it is winter time that we're airing this but also these same tips we're going to be going in about energy conservation, building design, how you can save money on your energy costs is absolutely going to help you in the summertime just as much as today. And, you know, it's a big field out there on how to save money on your energy cost. And a lot of folks, you know, they're, they're in here and they're going to tell you, you got to buy these windows and you're going to spend thousands of dollars for brand new windows or thousands of dollars for doors or maybe it's the roof has to be and that'll save you money or, or more insulation. And you you know what? Every one of them items definitely will save you money. But you got to think about it. How much money am I actually investing versus how much am I saving? And is it really cost effective? So today we're going to focus on what is your biggest bang for your buck for the least amount of cost. And we're only talk we're talking maybe less than a hundred dollars for this total package of what we're talking about. We don't do it. This is something you could do for yourself or have a handyman help you with. You're going to save this much money on a cold winter day, just like today within the month or so. So we're going to jump right on into it. So what is it that makes you feel cold? Let's talk about that first. It's drafts. And a perfect example of that is during the summertime, whether you're sitting in, say, a 95-degree room with a fan or a 95-degree room without a fan, that breeze literally helps you stay cooler. Well, that's fine and dandy in, this, in, in, in the summertime, but boy, come wintertime, that's just not what we're wanting. You know, uh, we definitely don't want that our heat to be sucked right out of our home. So what we're going to be focusing on... and absolutely is the best bang for your buck is cutting down the drafts in your home and around your home. So let's get started on talking about some of these different areas where we can seal them up. And that's where we're going to go outside and kind of work our way indoors. Uh, but so on the outside, let's talk about caulking. Caulking and sealing. These are going to be, we're going to be talking about caulking and sealing all the way through this particular program. 
later we'll talk about some other energy conservation designs and systems. But today we're just going to cut down on the drafts because that's going to save you the most money. So what I would like for you to do is go outside and walk around your house. And uh, we'll just talk about caulk real quick because if that's what you're going to be using, you can, you know, you can, it's always great to buy a great expensive silicone caulk, you know, that lasts for a hundred years. But, you know, honestly, if you just got you some good economical caulk, if that's all you can afford, that's great. You can always re in a few years. So don't worry about that. You have to buy this expensive, expensive stuff. If you can, fabulous. If you can't, no worries. Okay, so we're going outside and we're checking it out, walking around our home. So what are we looking for? Well, I'm looking for, you know, just like when I do home inspections uh, for folks, you know, we tell about these protrusions. So if you like your gas lines coming out of your home where your meter sits, your air conditioner, you know, where your air conditioning lines come in and out. These are areas that almost always you see where there's a draft coming through these or holes. And normally these are so big coming in and out that bees and bugs are getting in there. So for heaven's sakes, you don't want that either in the summertime. So let's cut down our drafts around that. So also your where your wire comes in for your service drop from your power company. That's also a hot area or, or a drafty area that you want to make sure it gets sealed. Okay, so we got all of these sealed around through there. Well, let's kind of keep on walking around. And then, of course, we all know that you should always have around your windows and your doors all cocked and sealed around that. So go around through there and make sure all that cocking's good. You know, and just, just, you know, just put a new bead around it. If you have to, take off the old if there is any. But just do a new good new bead around it and get all that sealed. We're going to talk more about sealing the windows and doors on the inside a little bit later. But so let's do this. Get all that good and cocked and cleaned up. Make sure there's no air drafts in through there. Then we're going to go in here and go around. Now, this is an area that a lot of people miss. It's now the current code in a, not, a lot of municipalities. And that's say if you've got a vinyl siding that's or you're any kind of siding that's going up against masonry. Well, right there at that gap where your masonry, masonry is either stone or brick. You'll want to caulk that. And seal that up because there again, you're getting moisture in, you're getting a lot of air in behind through there. So and these are just areas people just never think about. So them are really great areas to attend to. Then I want you to go over there. So if you got like a clapboard or a wood board type siding, wherever your trim boards all meet with your siding, make sure all of that's caulked and, and tight. You know, just think about you're trying to seal an envelope, you know, that you're trying to get nice and tight. And so you go, any kind of areas like that, you know, around your vents and things you want. Now, not your attic vents, but then your home itself, like your exhaust vents to your bathroom or something. Uh, make sure everything is tight around that, too, so no air can get in and around through there. So these are great places that we can focus on. And, you know, we may be talking... 10 15 dollars a conch if it's in a bad shape that you could get sealed up and so we're going to make sure them are nice and tight before we go in the house and then we're going to wander indoors and let's start down in the basement uh, and the reason i like to think about the basement is because just think about how heat works heat rises and so when a heat rises up it actually makes a draw and it like a chimney effect and you didn't get everything naturally underneath the siding and everything airtight it's impossible you know even though you did a great job out there so we want to go to the basement and seal that up so we don't get that thermal cycling effect where the heat brawls in there and, and up and out of the attic and we'll talk about that as we go through here with a little bit on the show but so let's go down in the basement and each and every one of your band boards you that band boards that's that outer board that all your floor joists tie into i got hey i got a lot of videos and such out there on youtube and my facebook talks more about that if you need to see some pictures that's the problem with radio like this is that you know it's a kind of trying to do a visual but just that outside board that goes around that all your joist ties in the joist are the part that holds the weight of your floor so caulk around each and every one of them little square areas okay then i want you to insulate them cavities in between your floor joist 
We can either use a bat insulation, like a fiberglass bat or something like that, or a insulation blanket kind of stick up in there. Now, just remember, when we use them kind of products, it's the dead air space in there. We don't want to cram it tight. Actually, if you cram it tight, you created more of a problem. Just put it in there so it's tight on the edges, but it's fluffy still. But what I really like to see and what we see and when we do green energy type homes that are get rated for green energy, we're using what we have a foam board, an insulated board. And you can get them at the Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards, a place like that. And they, the, I like them the best. You can cut them down to fit right into the opening. And then you seal that around that edge and of that. So when you're looking at it from the inside out, you'll have two layers of caulking and that tied up against it. That will cut your drafts, okay? And then it's already, your house is already built, so you're going to be limited to what you could do with that. But your floor joists are also, now you'll see they are sitting on a two by four. We call it a plate. That plate is between the foundation and your floor joist right along the base there where where the concrete wall meets the wood of your plate caulk that see then you're getting a, you know you should have an insulation underneath there but caulk that that'll make it tight okay and that will seal that up and of course naturally you want to be looking around your windows down in your basement seal that you know where the same protrusions that was going through the outside like your gas water you know all the well not so much your water lines because it's coming in well below but your gas lines your electrical lines these kind of places seal that from the inside also i know you got the outside now you're going to do the inside the double seal that will cut that'll tighten that up so now I think we're going to try to wander on upstairs and start looking around and see what we could put up there. And there's just a lot of things up there that we can do to help tighten up our homes. And, what, you know, we're going to start with the first things is we're going to start looking at the caulking again. You know, I'm, I know I'm beating this caulking stuff up, but it's really, really worth it, it, it's it's your biggest bang for your buck. So go around your windows and your doors again and tighten all that up and, and make sure it's all sealed around your windows. And, you know, you, you'll see where your drywall meets the window. If you got metal windows, you're going to want, you know, you're going to have some, you know, problems there. So make sure that's tight. Uh, and, you know, I'd even recommend around the trim. You know, so if your window's trimmed out, you know, with wood trim or whatnot, not a drywall return, seal that up on both sides of your trim. You know, there again, you're trying to make this airtight as possible. Yes, I hope you got insulation in your walls, but insulation is not an air barrier. That's what we're focused on here. And now... On your windows, remember the new, a lot of us still are old enough to remember the old days that we used to put plastic up on our windows, and I know a lot of folks still do. Well, they didn't put the plastic up around that windows to make it so as that, you know, that is insulated. They're cutting that air draft down. So what I is say, hey, this is an old green energy trick that we've been using for years. And so if you don't use the plastic, you know, which not re it's really a poor bar barrier anyway, I want you to get some of that foam board, that insulation, and cut that out to the size of your window. Use them in your windows that you don't leave, like your bedroom windows where you're, you know, to cut down on the air draft there. They're nice and tight. They're just a full panel, you know, it just slides right in there. They're real easy, really cheap, and that'll cut down. Now you've got an insulated window. And you also have an air draft a barrier. This is mostly for the windows that will be you know, your older windows, you know, your wood windows, your old metal windows on our, well, most of our newer insulated windows, they, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty good shape. They're, they're going to be airtight. Some of our cheaper insulated, you know, windows, new vinyl windows or composites, well, maybe not so much. But you stick that in there. Now, we also sell insulating curtains and blinds. But now we're starting to get into some ex more expense. I'm trying to keep this down so it makes us save us some money. Put them panels also into your your bedroom areas, any windows that you don't use very often, uh, maybe like on the north side of the house, things like that. And, of course, when it gets really cold, 
You can have them to stick in all your windows and every all at nighttime. It's going to save you a ton of money. We've been doing that trick for years and years, and that'll help you tons. Okay, so now we got our. We've kind of been attending to our windows, and now we're cocked around our exterior doors. So we're in pretty good shape with that now. And then you're going to right now. You're going to already feel. A, a difference in the home as far as any kind of drafts just what you've done so far you're going to be saving tons of money but we're going to start getting a little bit more nitpicky here and how we can save a little bit more money and for a little bit more cost a very little bit more cost what we're going to do now is i want you to go around there and look around your, uh, your inside of all your baseboards your baseboards them at your trim board at the bottom of the floor now, where you got carpeting, you're not going to be able to do this, but the carpeting actually kind of helps you already with this. But what we're going to do, so if you got like a, a, a vinyl flooring or a plank flooring or something, you seal that. Now, seal, I want you to seal that on the floor to the base trim on where the two meet because there again, we're getting that thermal cycling effect and where it actually, the attic is cooler your house is hotter, the hot air will just literally chimney effect, suck that right up through there. Your exterior walls, you have some insulation, but that's where your biggest cold, you know, your most cold areas are at, but that'll slow it down. But I want you to do it into the whole interior of your home. We're going to talk about that a little bit later here in the show, but when we do that, that's cutting down because that it's going to cut down anywhere well, that heat can rise up and go up into the attic and be lost out into the into the world. So you want to seal all of that also. Now, what's going to be is a twofold with that. And in a lot of municipalities, it's a code issue, not because of air infiltration to have that sealed right there at the baseboard and the floor, but it's because of moisture, water. So when you're mopping your floor, naturally when you mop you're going to get some water and stuff get up underneath them baseboards that's going to cause you some mold issues a little bit of water concerns so that's why we've been having to do this for several years as code now that's not all municipalities so i don't want to make that as a general statement but you see that quite often still so you want to make sure that you seal all of that now let's look at the top up there of our wall I want you to see, make sure your drywall tape and everything's nice and tight. Of course, you probably want that anyway, so it's a nice painted wall. And just make sure you don't have any kind of areas there to worry about. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to start talking about right around in our your, all your electrical and your light cavities. So inside of, the, you can buy, and you've, you've seen this, I know, folks, but it's a really great, easy idea. Uh, you go into you know, your hardware store, and they got for your outlet covers, your switch covers, they got little gaskets. You pull that cover plate off, and you just put these little foam gaskets in there, and you'll be amazed about how much air you'll save. Now, I recommend that you don't just do the exterior, you also do the interior. Because there again, we're trying to make this as tight as possible so no heat escapes. And you know, you're heating your inside, you know, it's going to go up there. You'll see that we have, uh, we got that gaskets around our slight switches and our outlets. But you'll put your hand down there, and we're, I'm going to show you a little test here. We're going to do in a little bit here. But you put your hand down there, and you're going to still feel a breeze come through the outlets. Uh, so a real simple fix. Just go get the child-proof plugs, the little plastic plugs, and stick them in there. And that will make sure that will cut down your draft. A little bit of a pain, you know, to have to take them out when you need your outlets. But if you got something plugged into it, you got it blocked anyway, right? So, you know, you, hopefully maybe it's a power strip or something if you have a lot of stuff coming out of it. But keep them sealed up tight, too. Or there again, I recommend that you do it not just on your exterior, but you do it on your interior walls, too. Now we think we got our house pretty tight. We have went around there. We cocked our doors and our windows. We've you know sealed up what we could and any kind of protrusions coming in or out. So let's go back downstairs here for a bit, and you can either use a candle or a lighter, or 
what would probably be a lot more preferable uh, if you can get one is like an incense or a little smoke stick and go around your windows and see if you see the any smoke moving or flickering the lighter is something that a lot of folks have that's the only reason to bring it up but you got to be really careful when you use a lighter you know you don't want to make sure you're getting hey, dust is one very flammable so you know in tight areas you know it's you got to be careful where but you know that goes with any kind of uh, anything like that other than a smoke stick uh so anyway now i want you to go around and go all the all your openings your doors and whatnot and see where you have any kind of drafts and see what you could do to tighten it up and one of the areas that you're probably going to see because we've been talking about caulking and everything so much that we haven't attended yet to the inside of our doors so you'll see that you're going to get a little error there. Now, what we're going to do with that, easy fix. Look down at the bottom of your doors, your exterior doors we're on right now. And on your exterior doors, though, you have a lot of our newer doors. You'll see there's screws on the very, that little wood piece, you know, on the bottom of it. Well, that is actually an adjustable threshold. Adjust that. It's not so the door can't shut tight, but not rubbing, but tight. So you don't get any kind of air movement up and underneath that. So we want to make sure that now, if you don't have an adjustable threshold, they sell what we call door sweeps. Now, just something that goes at the bottom of the door, a little gasket, that'll cut down on your air, okay? Now, let's look around our gaskets, around our perimeter of the door, or weather stripping, and make sure that looks good. Now, we have different types of weather stripping. I personally, you know, old school, I, you know, if my weather strip is getting wore out, I kind of really kind of like that old metal V uh, strips, really getting kind of hard to find anymore. But any kind of good gasket material that's made for that would be perfect. And you could buy, like I say, buy this at the hardware store, lumberyard. It's really economical. Uh, you know, and you'll see on a lot of our newer doors on, especially on the double doors, you'll see a little opening at the bottom. Oh, uh, if you look at the door, the side that opens up the very bottom of it, that's the area that for some reason there's a little gap in there. So you want to put a little extra insulation in there too. For some reason, builders throw that away, uh, because they don't like it rubbing or the customers don't like it, but you really do need it. So want to make sure you got that all tight too. Now you really got a quality sealed home so far in there. We cut down on our thermal cycling. That's what that's really important. So now we're going to work on cutting down any other drafts or heat or maybe can escape. And that is around all our lights. Our, our ceiling fans, any can lights, these kind of areas. These are the places now, especially like on our our lighting, can lights in particular, that's a heat generator. Well, naturally, that's been helping, you know, the cold air want to be drawn to it. So we want to get up, drop your trim covers off around it. We're going to go inside and outside on this one. But drop your trim covers off your can lights. Put some of that foam insulation around it. On the inside, where it's into the interior, use non-expanding foam. Reason I say that, oh, and non-flammable, make sure that it's designed for your can lighting. And the reason you want to do that is so as that it seals that nice and tight. You don't want it to, you know, get down and into the to your wall board, ceiling board. So that's why the non-expandable. Now, I want you to also then your ceiling fans and there's all these areas like right in here, your bathroom exhaust fans, seal all of that around through there, making sure that you got it nice and tight. You know, uh, man, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to, you're just going to be amazed at how much it's going to help. All right. So now we are looking good, except we got one last area, the elephant in the room, our access panel to our attic. All right. So we got to do something with that. There is just absolutely, I've never found a system that I could say is just the greatest. Uh, but we got to attend to it the best that we can. So there's a few options that you can do. You know, I would, I would recommend that if possible, you put a sealant around it or gasket material. But, you know, normally the gasket material is kind of gaudy looking. So people don't like to use that. Another system is that they put insulation bats laying on top of it. 
And that, that does help. You know, definitely it does help. Uh, I'd or use a foam board that's nice and tight that goes on top of the board where you don't do your attic access board so you can't see it either. It's like where your bats would be. And that would help seal it up nice and tight. Personally, like in my home, I have bo- I have attic steps going up into the the, the, uh, the up into the cupola area. I have a foam board, and then I put the insulation bats on top of that. They're kind of hard to drag that insulation bat over top of the attic access when you're shutting the hatch, uh, but you just do the best you can. But the foam board, that's my savior and grace, and that's what helps me uh, get it nice and tight. So now we're looking pretty good down there. Now we're going to get one. We're going to get up in the attic now, and now we're going to start being a little bit of more work. And maybe you can do this on your own, maybe in the can't. But if at all possible, these are this is what you're going to try to get done up there. And when they do a green energy audit for your home, these are the areas they're going to be looking for, too. They always ex- jump right into that. We've been in Green Energy Certified Inspecting Company, uh, so we, this is something we definitely send to, I, you know, honestly, folks, I don't crawl up in the mattocks like that like I did when I was a young man, but we got the young folks that jump up there, and they get around quite well. So... You can get hire somebody like that to get in there. What now? We're going to go back to them same lights. Remember when we talking about our can lights and we was talking about getting around our ceiling fans. So now you're going to use an expandable foam. Okay, make sure it's related, heat related, and everything to that particular you know uh, fixture. Seal that all up. Now you got that. Do you see a pattern I'm doing? Sealing inside and out. Double seal. You know, that way you got it for longevity. You don't want to do this again. We did one time, good enough. So you seal that up around your can lights and make sure you get all sealed around your ceiling fan fixtures and whatnot. But also what you have up in your attic is that you have chimney pipes and stack pipes and vent pipes that are coming up through there. And these are huge areas that need to be attended to. Absolutely. These are not areas that you can get to from inside your home. Only from up in the attic, or unless when they're building it, then they take care of it. But we're talking retrofit here. Uh, so get up there and seal that around there. There's a lot of ways of doing that, you know, uh, like, well, uh, expandable foam is probably the most popular. And that seals up any of your cavities. Uh, so you're cutting down on that, once again, that thermocycling effect. Also, it'll help you cut down on any condensation when, of these pipes. We get some water literally running down all the way down into our basement. We see this a lot with our stove pipes or our pipes off of our, our furnace system where they come, water just literally pours down inside of it. Well, that's the condensation from the heat to the, you know, coming, uh, coming uh, of your pipe hitting that cold air. So you're sealing all that up. You're cutting down on the moisture issues. Make sure you round your attic, fa- your bathroom exhaust fans. That's nice and tight. Make sure you got that taken care of. So now if we got, now we're going to go to the top plates. We're going to, and that is where your partitions, you'll see where the two by four lays flat and you'll see them all around. Try to clean that off on all your top plates. Seal that. That's going to help you cut down a hundred percent. You've already been inside the house. You've already are cut down on all the interior drafts. From the inside, now you're double to cut. Now you're double sealing it again from the top plates, and that is going to tighten that up to put you in great shape. All righty, now you know we have a lot of folks that got our HVAC systems upstairs up in the attics. What are we going to do with that? Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I just don't see anybody here in the Midwest really. I mean, we, down here where we're at. Uh, up north we see it more down south we see this more but not right in here for some odd reasons they do not put a conditioned area type around the furnace system so now your furnace system hvac our cooling system you know at, at the other time of the year for summertime it's working extra extra hard so what you want to try to do is keep that yeah, put it you know put it so you don't have to make you're not trying to make it airtight 
but you try to keep it a little bit of an insulated area around there. And you could use foam board is very popular. Sometimes people use bat insulation, you know, and build a little bit of a retaining wall. But, you know, the foam board, uh, rigid board is, is probably your best bet for this. All right, so now we got our ductwork. And we literally have ductwork that's not insulated. I mean, nothing on it up in our attics. Well, naturally, you want to put an insulation blanket around that and put it on the top, you know, of it. So, you know, to make sure and put it, wrap it the best you can, but just lay it around there. Make sure you're nice and tight. You know, I take that back. You don't really have to be so tight. You know, just make sure you get a good blanket. Just think about you laying in bed and trying to keep that heat in. Same thing. Now, you also have a lot of our insulated pipe up there. And some of this is hard pipe. A lot of it just nothing but an ins a loose kind of uh, uh, plastic type pipe. And uh, so wrap this up. I don't care how you do it, put wrap it. When you do your insulation, once again, we are not tightening it where we smash it around it. It is the dead air space in our insulation that creates our R value. So make sure you wrap around all of your duct work up there. And, you know, honestly, where, where I'm at in the Midwest here to St. Louis, Missouri area, I, I would think that you would want to do at least a minimum R30, you know. And if I'm up north or a little bit further, like in my home, I have a R, actually R100 in areas up to R45 in the least areas. So you know, to keep it nice and tight. So them are going to be some of the best ideas that you can do. And then if you actually now have some extra money, because we've already tightened our home, right? We're tight, top and bottom. And now, now, and only now, then we start thinking about adding more insulation. Maybe then we get some extra money, we can get them brand new fancy windows. I mean, I highly advise them. They really work. Uh, they just, you know, but you first let's take care of what's going to save us the most money. Heck, then you have a little extra money to invest into your home with these things. Then I want you to go back there and think about maybe you can get that new roofing system, more insulation in the attic, new doors, things like this to tighten it up, siding, it's insulated siding. And you know, you now you're really making it nice and tight. But let's start with the drafts first and work our way up. One last hint. This is a great one, and we've been doing it forever, and that is putting moisture into air. You know, when you get that static cling, when you touch them doorknobs and such, and, you know, before you even touch, get close to it, you got that shock, that's dry air. And dry air is cold air. And what we want to do is add some moisture in the air. Now, uh, for uh, folks that, and in the further parts of the country, like us and down south, we know what humidity is all about. It is absolutely miserable in the summertime, at, in the wintertime, because it makes you feel hot, right? So oh, well, let's use that same technique for inside the house. If you don't have the money to go get a humidifier, We'll talk more about humidifiers, and we have talked about that on other radio sh or other shows with our HVAC guys. But a humidifier goes right on the side of the furnace, and that puts water in your air in the winter time. Save you a ton of money. But if you don't have that, you know most folks don't. Just get you some boil of some water on the stove, and just let that boil. I tell you what, you will feel the 68 degrees, 65 degrees with humidity will keep you a heck of a lot warmer than 72 to 75 degrees with no humidity. Just something as simple as that. So heck fire, man, if you ain't even got money for the, the insulation or the caulking or any of that stuff, at least just start boiling you some water. It's healthy for you. It's going to make everything feel better, make your plants live better, going to make you stay warmer, and your life's going to be a lot more enjoyable at a lot less cost. With no need to give the energy company a dime more than what they already extract out of us. I love them. I appreciate them. But I don't want to have to give them any more money. Well, folks, hey, I really enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to wrap this show up. And what I want to do is we're going to come back and talk about more energy conservation tips, more ways of saving money. But I wanted to start with the basics here and work our way into other future programs. I really thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, check us out, www.Galloway Building Services. That's our web page. Check us out on our Facebook page, Galloway Building Services. We got a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of information. 
love to be able to help you in any way. You got a question, feel free to call me. I don't charge anything for talking. As you can tell, I love to rattle. God bless you all. Thank you for listening. I want to thank our producer here, Joey, for helping us out. <laughs> I, it, this show would not be possible without his service, and we greatly appreciate him. So shout out to him, and y'all have a great day. Thank you. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com.